Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. I am joined today by Michelle Quay, and we are talking all about storytelling today. So with that being said, Michelle, welcome into the podcast. Thank you so much for having me on this podcast. I'm really excited. I'm really excited to have you. So for our listeners that don't know you, tell us more who you are and what you do. Yeah, so let's start from where I am today. I am a visibility and marketing coach, and I help women coaches to use the power of storytelling so that they can turn a passion into profit, and I help them to get seen, get heard, and get hired. Um, I started on this journey because I was someone who was struggling with getting my message out and having a way to captivate the audience and so that people would know me, want to hear from me and actually want to buy what I offer to them. And so it was a huge struggle coming, coming a pretty long way to be here. And now my passion is just telling story, telling more stories. (laughs) Gosh, that's awesome. Now, is your background, what, what is your background in? Have you always been, you know, a visibility coach or where did you start? How'd you get here? I I don't believe any one of us wake up one day and say, you know what, today is a good day to be a business owner, right? (laughs) It's a good day to be a coach. It's always been a journey that we we travel. And my journey started when I was 11. Now, before I became a coach, I've been a pharmacist for the last 20 years. And so my my background has always been in healthcare, that patient and servers and pharmacists, and I deal with a lot of health professionals. So it was easy to talk to them because people always come to me for problems and issue and I'm the one who they look up to to have those problems solved Mm -hmm. and when I started out my coaching business it was like the complete opposite right because I have like what 200 followers and on my Instagram and on Facebook and they're all like my friends and family and colleagues that I had in the past so it was really hard to to sell to them And so one of the things that I started to do was because nobody knew who I was and nobody knew the reason why I became a coach. So I started to tell my transformational journey as someone who had been struggling with uh, physical disability as a result of a car accident when I was 11. And so I started to share um, how I got disabled and, and my recovery journey from 11 years old to 15 years old, how I was going, spending a lot of time going back and forth in the hospital and going to multiple surgery. And finally, when I reached to uh, 40, I'm, I know I'm skipping a lot of the details and I'm happy to go back to fill in the details for you. <laughs> but when I got to 40, I'm like waking up one day and I feel like so bad about myself that I just wanted to do something. I wanted to do something that would change my whole entire life. So I decided to sign up to a gym, which I had never gone to a gym before. And I started to work with a personal trainer who later on helped me to conquer Machu Picchu. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's incredible. It it was a very long journey. Uh, It didn't happen just overnight. It didn't happen like when I wake up uh, when I was 40 and then just suddenly things like life would be beautiful and completely change. It was definitely a journey. And I remember I spent a year prior to heading up to uh, the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu. Every single week I would go up and, and just start hiking. And a lot of time I, I use this analogy of how we start as a business business owner, entrepreneur, and going on that path to grow our own business and being getting out there to get seen. It's that it's that path we travel, like climbing the mountain. Yeah. Right. It's like, you know, you climb, conquer one mountain, and here's another mountain that you have to climb. So it was a continuous journey of overcoming these obstacles and these challenges but knowing the fact that you know you have that belief within you the power within you that you can keep striving forward and as you know so so my whole entire life from when I had the car accident to 40 um, it was a lot of that self-judgment and feeling sorry for myself and keep playing playing small in all areas of my life 
And it's that feeling, I, I know this is probably shared by a lot of listeners here too, is that feeling of I'm not good enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not tall enough. And that those were my constant inner critics that was playing in my head, which really sparked that fire of, you know, I don't want to keep listening to those voices anymore. I want to wake up and I want to do something different. I know I can do something different. And what was it? Like, what, what was that? What does that look like? So I was on this self-explorational journey. And finally, I came to um, discover coaching um, through a friend who, whom we had conversation with. And he was looking for a life coach for his nephew. And I was like, whoa, life coach, what does that mean? And so I came home, I asked the amazing Google and Google gave me a lot of answers. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why I encourage everybody, if you have a business, Put it on, put it, put put up a website, work on your SEO, right? Because people, when people are searching for answers, the first place that they go to is Google or mm -hmm. YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. People don't go to any, any, anyone else. They go to Google. How do I look for answers? And so I would encourage everybody to think about like really utilize your, your online assets, um, including your website, having your website, having your presence on social media. And so those are the important things. And I came across Life Coach. So I enrolled myself to a coaching school and got my certification. And so that started my business journey. And so I, I went from a life mountain that I had to climb now to a business mountain that I had to climb, which is not a very pretty thing. I will tell you that. Exactly. I can totally relate to that. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many things that just come up every single day. Like, how do I do the SEO? How do I get my message out? Who is my ideal avatar? Like all these things, you just keep struggling with them and, and overcoming them and keep moving forward. And um, I think a lot of it has to do with the confidence and knowing, knowing that even though you don't know, but you're going to know it later. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful right there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So true. And there is so much power in sharing your story in sharing the journey, because that's what people relate to. That's what makes people feel seen and heard like, oh, she gets it because she's been there. She's overcome something. She's climbed that mountain too. Like, yeah, I've had yeah. issues too, that I decided, well, maybe this isn't what I want to do when I grow up. You know, I, I share a, a similar story in that I come from a healthcare background and it was like, all right, you must have this like guilt, like well, I paid a lot of money for this piece of paper, but I should be using it. But at the same time, you feel this pull in another direction, but in sharing your story and embracing that journey, good times and bad, you never know who's going to be impacted by that. So I think what you're doing is absolutely incredible. And like you said, your prior experience in healthcare gave you so much experience to be able to do exactly what you're doing to help other people navigate the uncertainties of business because you've always been this resource for people to come to when they had questions, when they had problems, when they weren't feeling like you, what your past journey led you to this. It's, it's incredible. And I love how you just embrace it. And you know, it is like climbing a mountain because just when you think you're at the top, oh wait, there's another peak. Oh, well, let's just keep climbing. But yeah. yes, you know, just, just developing that confidence to keep moving forward. And that's where I think a lot of us get overwhelmed and frustrated. It's like, oh, well, well, she makes it look so easy. It must have been, you know, no, none of us woke up like this one day. No. You know, it's an ongoing evolution. And by sharing that, that's where our power is. So yeah. what if someone, what advice would you give someone if they don't feel like they have a story that's good enough? Like, oh, I really didn't, you know, have much of a, a story, you know, what, yeah. what would you say to that woman? I would say that every story counts, like even yes. with the most mundane, little, simple, boring things that you don't believe that it's worth sharing, it's worth sharing. Like if yeah. you think about all the things that's happening in our life, even 
when I get up, I have to go cook for my kids. And, and there's a lot of emotion when you get up and ki- cook, cook for the kids, right? Is this yeah. something that's really inspiring that you look forward to, that you love to cook? Because cooking cooking actually provides you with a, a sense of meditation as you're cutting through and prepare the food. It's meditative. Or you have this anger of, you know, kids, we need to get up, time to go to school, right? Um, uh, uh, Amy, wake up. I, I told you five minutes ago. There's a <laughs> lot of emotion that's carried in our story that we put in and live through every single day. So I think um, number one is, I know a lot of women lo- love to jur- journal and I love to journal. What I would recommend is to start writing things down. As much as boring as it sounds, have a get into a habit of putting things down on a piece of paper, start getting a story bank. And this is what I call it a story bank. bank. Um, no matter how small or how big the thing is, write it down, put it down. You never know when you're going to come back to it. You never know how you're going to use it in the future. And especially if you're a business owner, you, you're probably also wanting to grow a list, right? An email list mm-hmm. that you can communicate directly with your potential clients. So as you're creating these contents on social media, what connects with people is these boring, mundane stories that every single one of us have to live through. Uh, if mm-hmm. you're if you're a single mom, you're going through some stuff, and if you're you're married with kids with husband, yours yours you you're also going through some stuff. But that story is pretty much the same. How I take care of everyone else before me, right? We can all resonate with that. Yeah. Whether you're single, you're married, you're 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 uh, divorced, doesn't matter where you are. We still connect with the fact that I take care of everyone else besides me. So where's me? Right? Yeah. You empower someone through your story and, and every story that you, you share, it's significant to you and to the person that will become your potential client. It's not for anyone else, not for you, not for me. It's for the woman who's waiting to hear from us. That's what they want to hear. And they don't hear our story. When I share earlier my story, Emmy is connecting with her her own story. So when you hear story, we don't think about ourselves. We're actually hearing the story about someone else. Yeah, I love that. That's so true. Absolutely. It makes sense. And, you know, thinking, you know, to my own life, I notice I get more engagement on social media when I do share those those little stories behind the scenes. Like yesterday, you know, my daughter drew a picture and it it was a little questionable. So, you know, I just thought it was funny. And we've all had those moments where our kids draw something and they intend it to be one thing, but it looks like something else. I cannot tell you how much engagement, you know, you get over these silly little things. Like it was a puppy. Yeah. It didn't look like a puppy, but I mean, it just, you know, it's amazing how many moms were like, oh my gosh, this one time my kid drew this and, you know, just the sharing and the connection that it builds, just showing that we're all human. Like, guess yeah. what? We're all just on this journey together, trying to get through the day to the next thing, to the next thing. And yeah, you're really building those connections. Mm-hmm. I, and I think it's also important to to realize that there's a marketing piece after that, yeah. right? So yeah. if I were to use that story, and I think this is a lot of where um, where women uh, entrepreneurs are struggling with, how do I take that piece of story yes. and market it in the way that people will want to buy my program or or sign up with me? So how I would, I'm just going to give a real, real-time example, yeah. um, how I would turn that piece of content that you have already created and you're getting a lot of engagement on, I would turn that into teaching them a lesson, mm-hmm. teaching people a lesson, right? So if you're a life coach and mindset coach, or you have some type of, uh, maybe you're a therapist and you're, you're teaching people how to, how to uh, change the way that they see things, change the way that they believe. A call out would be something like, hey, are you, are you judging based on the face value or are you believing yes. what you see? But sometimes our beliefs, what we see is really limiting and based on the condition that we have in the past. Yeah. Here's a perfect example, and here's a story. The other day, my daughter draw, drew a dog, and what a life for me. I thought it was something else. It was hilarious. It was hysterical. But that shows you that sometimes what we see is not the entire truth. 
And so you just turn that beautiful piece into another piece of content. And if this is something that you would like to work on, here's my calendar, book a call with me, or here, send me a DM, let's talk about this. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's beautiful when you just start to look at things from a different perspective, how many opportunities arise, how many, you know, so many people are like, oh, I don't have anything to share, but something like that, you just showed our listeners, you perfectly demonstrated how you can create valuable content from that because it's relatable. Most of us as moms have had our kids, you know, draw one thing, but it's another. All right, well, let's reframe that to business. And I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. now for and I'm going to have to find you on social media so I can follow you to see what that picture looked like. <laughs> it's worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> and it started a whole dinner time conversation. <laughs> so, oh yeah. I'm, you never I'm sure, I'm sure she saw something very differently than what we did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, we, every day is an adventure as a parent. Yeah. Now, for those listeners that, you know, feel like it's, they're, they're scared. They're scared to share their story. What advice do you have for them to move past that fear, to silence those inner critics, to calm down those voices of self-doubt and uncertainty in their minds when, when it is a little scary to share your story and get vulnerable? Absolutely. And, and you know, it's funny because when I first started out um, my my business, I was afraid that am I, am I sounding too greedy, right, to share my story? Because yeah. my story is my story and I'm making money out of this. And is that even moral? Is it even ethical? And so there was a lot of like inner, inner self-doubt that was floating around in my mind. And I think the most powerful question that anyone can ask themselves, and, and this is something that I did to myself, is ask why. Why do you want this? Why do you want to start a business? Is this something for you or is this something for something someone else? And if you really think about why we started a business and why we want to help other people, then it really comes down to the bigger, bigger self, right? It's not me anymore. It's not about what I can get out of my sharing story. It's about what I can do to inspire someone to get up to take some action so that that person would experience what I have. And so when you answer that question, why do you want to do this? It, it becomes very clear that I am doing this not for myself, but I want to help other people who may be struggling with the same fear and same self-doubt to inspire them to get up, tell their story, because the, the, the way that they're going to tell their stories is going to inspire someone else. So we create this ripple effect. If we can let go of our, you know, that me, me and thinking, oh my gosh, my story is not good enough. Oh my gosh, this is too deep, too dark. No one's going to want to listen. This is too depressing. But we don't think about what it can do for someone else. And when you can do that, when you think about what you can do, what your story can do for someone else, you take yourself away from feeling small or feeling, feeling insignificant or having this self-doubt and you're able to come out bigger, being the bigger you, okay? And that bigger you is going to create impact. It's going to inspire action and it's going to change the world. And we need people like you to get up and tell your story. Yes. I will say though, how deep and how detailed your story needs to be, it's going to be depending on how comfortable you are in sharing it, right? So we don't need to share all the detail. P people don't care about all the details about, oh, when I was 16, this is where I was. And when I was 18, this is where I was. People care about the lessons that you have learned, the value you have carried into your, your life. And that is going to create an impact for people. So those oh, are, gosh, I know it's a long yes. answer. No, but it's perfect though. And it makes sense. Once you shift that mindset about, you know, off of yourself and onto the impact that you can make by sharing your story, by helping the next woman, you know, thrive in her life. That's, it's a beautiful thing. The ripple effect. You never know how much of an impact you're making on someone else's life. And that right there is just absolutely, it's beautiful when you think about it. Like think of the greater good. Think about what, you know, keeping your story hidden to yourself, you're holding that back. You're holding that, that gift you have to help others. You need to share it. It needs to be heard. 
I love this. Michelle, this was a phenomenal conversation and I could just talk with you all day. But since we are short on time, where can we learn more about you? How can we get into your world? People can find me through my website at elevatelifecoaching.org where I have all the information, including social media, links and everything. Awesome. Perfect. So be sure to check that out. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.